Okay, my friends, let's try this a little bit here. So we're doing a couple videos here from 2G. I'm going to start with a basic one, just in case, you know, you missed today or you're a little confused. And then um, and then I'll do a couple more that are a little bit trickier. So I'm scrolling down here, and I'm going to highlight this part right here, this little blue box. I don't know if I can, I don't think I can uh, draw on it, but they're giving you the steps. Make the RHS, that means right-hand side. Make the right-hand side zero by shifting all the terms to the left. Fully factorize the left. Draw a sine diagram. And from the sine diagram, you can figure it out. So they do a couple examples. You can just really quickly look at it, and then I'll do one with you a couple. So the first one is a traditional one. 3x squared plus 5x is greater than or equal to 2. So they bring everything over to the right. Make the right-hand side zero. Or sorry. They bring everything to the left um, by, and make that zero. So that's what they do here. They fully factorize it, and then make a sine diagram. And in their sign diagram, they're just getting you right to the results. They're not showing you as in-depth. So I'll go a little more in-depth. So let's just do one. Um, I'll do a couple here. And this is pretty straightforward. So you can bet that they want to make it a little harder. So what they're doing is their problems are doing... Each one's kind of a quirky. It's quirky when you factorize. It doesn't go so quick. Now the first one, 1a, they've already factorized it for you. But if you notice, it's kind of weird. It's 2 minus x then x plus 3, because normally when you factorize stuff, you have the x first. So it's just a little difference. So let's do that one, and um, I already got it right now. So they've the first step's been done. We put 0 on the right-hand side, everything went on the left. The second step has already been done. They factorized it already for us. So we're on the third step, we're going right to the sine diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw my sine diagram. So what you want to do is find your, uh, your two zeros, one zero for each factor. And the best way to do it is write each factor in its own row. And then what we're really looking for is what happens when you multiply those two things together. Because that's, if you think about it, the way you want to, uh, in your mind, think this. is this thing, 2 minus x, times that thing. This times this has got to be greater than or equal to 0. Which tells you right away, these either both have to be positive because a positive and a positive is going to be greater than zero, or or they both have to be negative. But if one's positive and one's negative, or either way, this is going to throw it off. It's not going to work. So I'm starting to think now that, that um, as I say this, I think I see how Laura was doing hers in a, in a little bit. Of it. I think she was using that way of looking at the problem and coming up with the four different scenarios and figuring out in which case is uh, are either both of these positive or in which case they're both negative. I think that's exactly what we're doing. Actually, that's not so bad. But I'm going to show you the way that we did it and the way the book is, is telling us with a sign chart. It's really like all different. It's just the same thing, just different ways of looking at it. So start with the first one, 2 minus x. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'm going to bring the x over so it's x is 2. When x is 2, that's 0. So let's mark that. Let's mark the 0 just so we have a place value. So when x is 2... I know that's a zero point, so I'm going to draw like a little line. So I know that right there it's zero. Now, this is kind of weird. Usually to the right it's positive and not left is negative, but you got to think about this. This is different because it's 2 minus x instead of x minus 2. So to the right, like say, let's pick a number like 10. When x is 10, 2 minus 10, that's negative 8. So it's negative. So it's negative to the right positive to the left. This is cool. Now x plus 3, that's an easy one. That's going to be at negative 3. At negative 3, I'll draw a line. Actually, let me let me draw a little bit further. I don't want it so close to my um, terms. Draw like that. So this one's 0 here. Now that's traditional. So the left is negative, positive to the right, all the way, way right. It's all positive. And then what you're really looking at here is what happens when you multiply the two together. So a positive and a negative is a negative. Positive and a positive is a positive. A negative and a positive is a negative. So you know, you can see that the, the answer when these two things are multiplied together, when is it greater than zero? It's happening in this range in the middle. And that can be the trickiest part. How do you write that? So I would write it like put the x right there in the middle. And just look at your boundaries. X is less than 2, 
or in this case, less than or equal to 2. Why is equal to 2 okay? Well, if you put 2 in for x, put it right in here, 2 minus x, that's 0. 0 times anything is 0, and 0 is equal to 0. Because remember, the original problem has a greater than or equal to. So you're going to do it like that. And the other side is going to be negative 3. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So you read it like that way when you're looking at the left. And then when you look to the right, you read it like this way. x is less than or equal to 2. Either way, you start in the middle with x, and then you read it to the left or read to the right. I guess that's the way you could think of it. And if you wanted to, if you try to do it like a Laura's way, I think you could figure that out too. Um, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna confuse you more. Um, so that's one problem. I'll do another one right in the same video. I'm gonna do the second one. So this one's a little bit trickier because they haven't fully factored it. But what you want to do is just go ahead and write it out. So x minus one squared really means x minus one times x minus one less than zero. Now you've got your two factors and you know just kind of follow, follow through your steps. Trust the process. So the process says draw your sign chart. Once again if you want to think about it ahead of time what you're really looking for is when, when this times this is less than zero one has to be positive and one has to be negative. That's the only way that can happen. And if you stop and think about it for a minute, since it's the same term, x minus 1, x minus 1, that's not possible. How could that be? You can't even do it. So there's no solution. But let's go ahead and use our technique anyways and make sure it gets the same thing. So I do my two um, rows, and then I do my final one. And then I pick my zero point. So x minus 1, that's when x is 1. I should write the numbers on top, and they don't get in the way of the line. And then put a zero in there, put a zero in there. It's always negative to the left, positive to the right. And so, of course, you can see when you multiply the two together, negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive, positive. It's always positive. It's either going to be zero or always positive. So it's never going to be less than zero. Never. Empty set. No solution. Cool. So um, hopefully that gives you the foundation. I'll do a couple more of the trickier ones, too, to help you factor them. All right, I'm going to pause this now.